you Menaka works as an associate software engineer at Accenture, it's Accenture and uh, also she was a Microsoft student partner. So that's a range that gives Microsoft to super high uh, active uh, students that speak a lot. So that means you are mostly basically like a Microsoft MVP in activity as a student, and you're also a Mozilla Firefox student ambassador. So that sounds really cool. Today, Menaka, she's uh, going to talk with us regarding .NET Core Microservices. The talk is named Explore.NET Microservices with Azure Services. Uh, Menaka, Pascal Pillai, uh, your stage yes. is yours. Yeah, definitely. So today title is Explore.NET Core Microservice with Azure Services. The both the content is very vast. So if you go with a, an architecture view or uh, implementing a cloud, it is both are a very vast because lot of service available. Same, we have a lot of approach for uh, creating an application. Some use microservice, other use only an architecture, lot of. So the both the concept is little vast. So I choose uh, some of the preferable services that we can use with our .NET Core microservice. So that's what we are going to discuss in short, in this short span time. So as already introduced, this is me and uh, this a lot of the, contact way I am available. So you can reach out me via this uh, platform. So let me. So what we are going to discuss today is like a monolithic architecture, the pros and cons of monolithic and microservice architecture and pros and cons, API gateways, .NET Core and API gateway, how to implement microservice with API gateway in Azure. If you see this agenda, you may get a thought of like a very basic things we are getting stuck started like we already know about monolithic we are already know about microservice what is a way of implementing azure services major today but why we are discussing this much in the short span time if you see there are a lot of application even we are developing today we follow monolithic due to some of the pros and cons in our microservice so we cannot say we are migrating everything to microservice because of its advanced future because of its reliability other things there is some of the need where we need to develop our application with monolithic architecture so the knowledge of monolithic and microservice is very needed if you want to develop something that needs to meet the customer goals in an efficient way so that's what i'm choosing this very basic topic with the, some of the advanced futures so how we can implement our microservice with the azure service that's supported for implementation so before getting into the topic let's see this is how the monolithic architecture looks like so if you have an application everything will be under the single architecture so the load balancer will balance your load either from your desktop browser as well as from your mobile device so this is if you see this one you have the product service as well as the catalog service, everything under the single UI. So everything belongs to the single package. So every time you need to request a client requesting uh, your application, need to go with a single load balancer that approaches your single uh, thing that has been under the single UI. So this, if you see, this approach is good. As per my knowledge, when I started working back before two years of starting my career, I found a lot of application that been built in this monolithic architecture. Everything is under the same roof. So I can able to see every code that belongs to each other, uh, either it's a product or order or payment in a single roof. It's very easy for me to fix a bug also. But why we are going for a microservice? So th this is very simple because we can see everything in a single view. So even a bug fixing also easier. We have a single load balancer. So we can able to balance our load from the desktop as well as mobile device, then where it's efficient gone, why we are going for microservice. So that's the pros and cons that we are going to discuss for our monolithic architecture. So what are the difficulties with monolithic when it grows? If you have a large monolithic code, think yourself as a developer, new developer to the uh, code that is already existing. Seeing a number of lines of code that makes a new developer to fear what exactly, where it starts, where it ends. So seeing uh, constructing a large code application is very hard if you are working with a monolithic architecture and scaling also becoming very challenging. If you go with a DevOps end that scares us a lot because we need to do a continuous integration as well as 
continuous deployment if i am work with a microservice it's very easy for me i have a lot of container supporting things services that are available in azure so i can do containerization along with a docker or any azure container registry service i can deploy directly to my devops but if you think about monolithic it's very scary thing that i can do for in a devops end so it's a, it will overload my ide every time i load my vision uh, i load my application think myself my ide it will not launch as soon as possible because of the length of its code as well as the size of the application extremely difficult to change technology or language of framework because everything is tightly coupled depend upon each other if you go with microservice there is also dependency is there but if you compare the microservice with the monolithic architecture the dependency is more so i will never say the microservice have no dependency because two services need to communicate each other either in a synchronous or asynchronous way so there is also a dependency between the two services but if you come with a uh, monolithic architecture the the dependency is more so that makes us to difficult to change our technology even if you think like you want to migrate to the next level think about changing the technology or upgrading to the next version so it's very difficult in case of the monolithic architecture as i said before uh, some of the application still needs monolithic architecture i will never say that every application we are going to build we need to follow the microservice architecture depend upon the uh, you need to consider the pros and cons of your application and you need to design the architecture that suits for your application either if, if you are going to design an enterprise based application you have no other option you need to go with microservice for an efficiency purpose for other case you can able to use as per your need as per your flexibility uh, along with the scalable in kind so if you come to the microservice architecture each and individual services will be split you already see every services as product catalog and payment under the single ui so the individual service i'm splitting so what happened here is if there is any fault in a particular service the other service will not get affected so it's easy for me to fix and identify the bug exactly where it is located without disturbing the other services this is very easy for me to deployment end also as i said before we have kubernetes service container registry docker and this makes our work easier for deploying the containerized application along with the devops so i have other services that support me to work the, with this microservice efficiency that is api gateway service as i said before we have lot of services to support our development activity either in a, a devops and as well as in our build it, build it. that means a development end so if we cannot incorporate every azure services in our application depend upon our need and uh, depend upon the uh, utility we are using we can use some week sometime we need to use uh, azure storage service in some cases we will use only the app service for public publishing so depends upon the need with the usage of azure app service vary so it uh, it it uh, it's mainly depend upon the application you are creating the need and the usage of service is incorporated here i am using azure api gateway you can use api management in in some other cases for managing your api so depend upon my need here it's a microservice i can use a queue storage for triggering or operation for communication establishing the communication i can use a logic app as a service so lot of service i can use for making my work easier so the particular thing i am here discussing is about the api gateway how it exactly works those all are the privileges with microservice architecture those all are the terms and uh, key points already i discussed it is how it is help for fixing the bug how it is used for making the deep programming difficulty to easier by splitting it into the services so this makes the new developer to understand the code easily so those all are the topics and uh, basic points that need to be uh, took for developing an application uh, for co converting your application or migrating your application or creating your application in microservice those all are the good points we can take it as an advantage as well as we have several disadvantage also if we have a coin we have both sides na same we have some cons also so the, let, let me discuss this about later so before that we can go for a something like services there was a lot of the cons if you go with microservice it's more complex creating separate separate service and establishing the communication and making it to available for everyone this is a major concern that we need to 
take into account while we are developing a microservice application. And second thing is it's needed cultural changes. Every developer, we cannot say they understand the cultural changes about the DevOps or Agile culture. So that makes it somewhat harder for a new developers. And it is more expensive because we are incorporating a lot of new services technology. So it's a little expensive as well as it have the security thread also. So this is main criteria or main point that need to take into concern because security is very important while we are doing the application either it's an enterprise or it based on your uh, customer needs security threats is taken into account so today topic is about api gateway so if you think as i said before we have a common gateway and what is the use of that common gateway we already seen the common gateway in our monolithic architecture also so it's not going to do something different in our monolithic as well as a microservice but we need to use this api gateway in every purpose in uh, in spite of the uh, architecture we are using so the api gateway is an api management tool that sits between a client and the collection of backend services so it acts as a reverse proxy to accept all the application programming interfaces aggregated service required to fulfill them this is like um, it acts as a moderator between the client and your application so we can use api gateway in several approaches i am using oscillate api gateway in some cases i can use azure api gateway way it solely depends on the ease of the developer only i cannot say this is the best one you can use it depends on because i used to work on oscillate so it's me it's easy for me to work on oscillate api gateway for someone who have the uh, wide knowledge of azure they can already having the knowledge of azure api gateway they can work on the uh, azure api gateway also so here we can incorporate Azure API Gateway for two things because of security threats. Already I told like security threat is a major concern of uh, creating an application in a microservice architecture. If you go with Azure services, it have the lot of certified for compliances. So it makes your application to free from the security threats. So incorporating the Azure API gateway secure your application via its security compliance provided by the Microsoft. So it's very easy also because if you go with Oslate also, it's very easy by creating a single JSON file that I will discuss later. If you go with the normal uh, Oscillate or any other API gateway, it's fine and good. If you go with Azure API gateway, the only concern is for security threat and ease of developing. So that is a major thing. So this is how a single custom API gateway service look alike. I have a client mobile as well as SPA web app with the traditional web apps. Everything requesting my application, think I, I have many services incorporated to form a single architecture of microservice. Everything will have a common moderator as API gateway. It will act as a web host. So what here um, the actual processing is happening is every time my client requesting, it splits across the services. So it at, at particular time, it not overload the, my application as well as at particular time, when any request is coming to my application, it will act as a balancer. So this makes my application to be stable in spite of the request from various platform, either it is a web app or it is a mobile app, any other platform. So this is how my my API gateway usually work. This API gateway works same for every architecture as I told before. Either it is an Oscillate API gateway or it is an Azure API gateway. This is a common activity of my uh, of the api gateway so it is uh, it had an added advantage if you go with an azure api gateway it has something analytics and monitoring tools supported with that that is one of the key advantage of um, going through the azure api gateway so this is how uh, customized api gateway services look alike so we can able to access our services independently without loading our entire application by means of this api gateway so the next thing is other than Azure, what is a traditional approach for communication or balancing? Or uh, we have a lot of uh, communication, as I told before, synchronization and asyn asynchronization. So establishing a communication between two services, we can use any uh, using a no using normal REST API approach. Or if you are, want to go invade into microservice with Azure service, we can use Azure Queue storage as well as Azure Logic App 
to act as a communication sender and receiver so whenever some table is getting updated the other table that depend on the second service will auto update by means of receiving the message from the old service so there are a lot of way this is something like a api gateway particularly for oscillate uh, here we are not considering a lot of things about azure this is a very lightweight api gateway if you are a beginner you want to create some api gateway in a microservice uh, as a dot net developer background we can go with the oscillate api gateway it is a open source also it supports for dot net core so you can deploy into the same application deployment environment where you are deploying your microservice and container so it allow the cross platform also so you can able to deploy it in your linux as well as in your windows so that's it i just need to finish this uh, session in a very short span so i hope that i cover everything for a detailed description or for a detailed uh, things if you want to learn about uh, api gateway you can just follow my blogs i written the detailed description about this api gateway uh, along with the code snippets here for a better understanding just for a better understanding other than that this is ab all about my session i hope i i completed maximum yeah thank you very much that was really uh, a lot of content in such a short time menaka and also i know i believe that you are uh, from india right yes i'm from india so menaka and jayakumar thank you very much i think there is pretty late around 11 or 12 right yes it's yeah. 11 wow it's, it's so fantastic having you here Thank you 